Welcome back to the entrance of thy words. We started last week with the fear of the Lord. We're in our Theology 101 sessions here. And uh, last week we talked about how important it was to fear the Lord. And we talked about there being a, a right kind of fear and a wrong kind of fear. And we talked about the fact that 1 John chapter 4 says that perfect love casteth out fear. But that's in the case of the great white throne judgment. And as saved people, we should not be uh, fearing, we should not be fearful about the great white throne judgment because we're saved people and we will not have to be judged there. We will be judged according to our works at the judgment seat of Christ, 1 Corinthians 3, 2 Corinthians 5, Romans 14, all three of those chapters deal with <clears throat> that judgment that we know as the judgment seat of Christ. Um, we ended last session by uh, talking about the fact that Herod uh, feared men and he did not fear God. And so he had John killed and um, that, uh, that ended up uh, being his demise. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare. So I think it would uh, benefit us today to talk about uh, why the fear of the Lord is necessary. And I have about uh, four or five things here that uh, I think uh, we, it will be beneficial for us to talk about as far as the, the, the fact that the fear of the Lord is a necessity. Uh, first of all, um, in order to really worship God, uh, there needs to be some healthy fear of the Lord. Psalm 5, 7, the Bible says, In thy fear will I worship. And so if you're going to really worship the Lord, uh, there has to be some kind of a biblical fear of God. Um, you, you wouldn't think that you would uh, worship a, a creature who was on an even playing field with you as far as uh, their knowledge, uh, their power, uh, the fact that he is uh, omnipresent and, and we are not. So when we really get a biblical view of God and his knowledge and his presence and his power, then it causes us to want to or to see the necessity to worship him. So without the fear of God, uh, a proper fear of God, there won't be a proper worship. <clears throat> you also need to fear the Lord in order to serve him. Psalm 2 verse 11 says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. So to have a proper idea of service to the Lord, there needs to be, again, a healthy fear of the Lord. Next, um, fear of the Lord will keep you from sin. So if you have a proper estimation of God and there is a true heartfelt fear of the Lord there, uh, then you, that will keep you from sin. Now, I want you to listen to this. This is one of those verses that all the scholars fuss over. And it looks like there's a contradiction in it, but there's, there's not. And you know that. That you that trust the Word of God know uh, that there's no contradiction here. Exodus 20, verse 20. The Bible says, Moses says to the people, actually this is God talking to the people, fear not for God is come to prove you. So Moses says, God says through, through Moses, fear not for I'm come to prove you. And it goes on and says, and that his fear may be before your face that you sin not. So if you look at the verse and break it down, what it says is God is saying, don't be scared. I've come to scare you. And all the, the commentators and, and all the biblicists uh, get together and say, ah, there's a contradiction because the first part of the verse says, don't be scared. And then the next part of the verse says, you need to be scared. Okay. Um, if you have an, any idea <clears throat> of an earthly father, then you'll also get that an idea of a heavenly father. And when I, what I mean by that is this. If you had a good father that raised you, that trained you up, then you know that at some point you fear him, but you love him also. And so 
God here is saying to the people in Exodus chapter 20, don't be scared. It's okay. It's me. I'm here. I love you. But I am here to strike fear in your hearts that you might be able to serve me, stay away from sin, right? And that's the main thing in Exodus 20 is he says, I'm here, okay, I'm good, you're good, I love you, but I am here to scare you because if I really put godly fear in you, then you'll stay away from sin and we will be able to maintain this relationship, okay? And that's normal. That's a normal relationship. That's just how that works. Now, the fear of the Lord is also necessary for good government. David said in 2 Samuel 23, 3, He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. So, a God-fearing man will watch his words. Now, if we had politicians who were God-fearing men, they would watch their words. They would make sure that their words were uh, pleasing to God. They'd be careful how what they said and, and how they treated God and how they treated his words. Uh, they would not let a church tell them what to do. So a politician who was a God-fearing man would not let a church tell him what to do. Any church, Baptist, Catholic, doesn't matter. <clears throat> he would also not succumb to minorities who, in essence, want to overthrow the government and want to have their way. So a, a God-fearing politician would not succumb to minority groups like the NAACP, the ACLU, uh, BLM. They would not succumb to that pressure they would realize that that is a minority group and it is anti-biblical in many facets. A politician is there to represent the people. And you very well know that even in 2021, there's a majority of people, especially in places like Tennessee, who still at least honor the Bible and, and want conservative values. So a politician would not have his own agenda and allow money, or pressure from minority groups to influence him or his own agenda to influence him because he would be he would have such a healthy fear of God that it would push him in a direction of trying to please God, honor his words, honor him, and be there to represent the majority of the people. Uh, in this case especially because the majority of the people in a place like we live still know uh, that God exists and he's all powerful and his words are still true and it's dangerous for a nation to go against him and go against his words. So again, the fear of the Lord is necessary uh, for good government. Uh, the fear of the Lord is necessary for administering justice. If you fear the Lord, you will make right judgments because you know that law in Matthew chapter seven says that uh, if you judge with a harsh judgment, then that will come right back on you. So. If you fear God and you try to honor his words, then you'll be careful about justice because you know that, hey, if I pronounce a really hard judgment on this person, then when I do wrong, then somebody might pronounce a hard judgment on me. You gotta be careful there. What you uh, sow, you reap. And lastly, the fear of the Lord is necessary for perfecting holiness. We are told in Philippians 2.12 to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you. So God has placed salvation inside of you, and we are to work what he has already worked into us. We are to work that out with fear and trembling. If you are going to be perfected in holiness, then it will be by the words of God, it will be by the Holy Spirit inside, but there will have to be some kind of fear and trembling even in the saved person. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this. Good day and God bless you.